just be very careful here. Okay. Should be good if we have one of those other kind of knives. So now, if we have all the pieces together here, and we kind of now you can kind of fan it out a little bit. All right. Now you got one wing one side, and then we'll do the other wing on the other side. Same amount, okay? And then we'll get to the head part. All right. So we'll take these guys off. Usually you want to put these like a little bit of water with lemon juice, okay? So it doesn't get too brown, especially if you're using it for a presentation. I mean, this is kind of an old school one, but this is always fun. So we'll go into about here, about right there. So we'll just make our guide mark, okay? Just same thing, okay? And this guy, just until we hit... That initial cut, see, just bring it right out. It's a little deep on that side, it's okay. Let me just my camera just a little bit. Hey, Bob, okay. I'll do it two more times. Okay. This is good too if you want to do like Hasselback potatoes, where you put the you would put a potato here like this. Okay. And you would make these nice little slices and then you would stuff it with cheese and bacon and all that stuff, okay? So be very careful when you're doing this, especially with a sharp knife. Okay. All right. We'll do it again. Okay. Right down here. Okay. Get right in. Okay. Here. So now we got the other side. Okay. Let me show you the wing pattern before I show you how to do the, the head real quick. All right. So let's do the bottom parts, the wing, the, the for the head. So we're gonna go like this. I'm gonna cut this. Do the same method. Okay. But we want to get the same sizes. Okay. To get to, when we get to the head. All right. I have it. My knife is a little too short. I should get a longer knife here. Okay. This is about we want a piece like that to make our head. So before we get the head, we want to cut a little spot for the the neck right here, all right? Now you go online, you can see some really intricate knife work with this. This is always a classic thing, okay? Just see that, my head's gonna go right in there. Also the seeds, we're gonna save for the eyes. Okay, so we'll take a few of them out. Okay, one is good enough there. Just grab another one. Okay, make sure, don't waste anything. Save all the other pieces, okay? Eat them, share them with your friends. So you wanna do, you wanna get like some kind of a nice swanny look, so should probably go a little more towards where there's a curvature here. So. So now we got that curve going, okay? Just clean it up, okay? So now that we have this curve here, it'd be easier to get that swanny kind of head. Okay, so turn it over. All right, so we got that. Uh, you can do it in different ways. Many people do differently. Then you could take the pits and make kind of like, oop, kind of slippery. So make an eye right here. Use your OCR. and then use your knife and press that in. Oh, that got away from me, that one. Okay, let me try that again. All right, these guys are a little slippery. Okay. There you go, press them in on one side. And do the same on the other. Let me get this guy slippery. So slippery, these seeds. Okay. Just follow, you can see the shadow of it right here. Just follow that again. Okay. 
press it gently in okay so now we got the eyes going and we're gonna put that in there all right and let's figure that out a little bit okay all right mm -hmm. okay so if we need to just cut this out a little bit more just curve your knife in there a little bit That's all good. Got a little swan face going there now. Clean up your board. And we'll push out these wings that we made, okay? If you have a sharper knife, more intricate knife, you can do more designs and details. Okay. So slide these out. Okay. I haven't done these in a while. You should do these a lot, corner school, especially for platters and things like that. So you got a little bird, a little duck or a swan, depending on what you're um, cutting into. And like you could push these a little further back. But if you're gonna do this, be very careful. If you're not using the chopsticks, I was just doing it that way. You could use two knives as well um, to not slip. All right, so it's pretty easy. I mean, if you're going to do it by hand, be very careful. If you're not going to do it with either the two chopsticks and go slide across with the knife. All right. So we'll leave that guy there. Try it by hand. Just be careful. You don't want to go all the way through. Okay, just feel it as it goes through. Okay. I'm just using the weight of the knife, okay. Oh, where's this guy? Okay, don't don't kind of like hack at it like this because you're definitely gonna go right through. I'll be a little delicate with this, yeah. It's ideal to use a small paring knife for this, but mine is left at work somewhere. All right, so now you see how the wings are forming again here, like that. You got your whole kind of wing thing going. All right, so let's go to the other side. The other side should be just as good. Where the hell is this going? So, let these guys go in here. All right, so let's make the head. So let's make a little slot for the head here. Here, I'm gonna get that little, little dirt going. Let's make them look more like a swan this time. A little small beak. Okay. Okay. Cut it off here. Let's put the eyes in. Oh, where are my pits? All right, so let's put the eyes in real quick.
crushes in. You go online, you see a ton of different tutorials about doing this. I'm just putting this in there just for so we would do this for basic knife skills. Okay, and we'll put this guy in here. Okay, just stick him right like that. Little happy little duck or swan. And then we'll just pull out these other pieces with the by hand. All right, if we were to do this in class, you would definitely be using cut gloves, which means on your, on your other hand that you're not using a knife, you will have a cut resistant, either it's made out of chain mail or it's actually made out of um, carbon fiber to stop it from puncturing your hand, okay? And you could work with stuff in your hand, especially even more intricate um, kind of knife work, especially if you're using a tournée knife, okay? So these guys could get together here. They could talk or a date, whatever they want to do. Okay, but these are cool for fruit fruit platters and all that stuff. Okay, very cool. Okay, one last thing, because we're going to be working on doing like an apple chutney or an apple uh, compote. So I'm just going to show you how to properly dice an apple so you get that consistent look. Um, this is not really for everything. Like if you do it for apple pies and other things, you cut it differently. But for this, this is just going to be for like dicing. So we're going to get that consistency. So we're going to cut it in half again. <clears throat> okay, then I'm going to cut it in half again. So we got the quarters going. Okay, now I'm going to stand it up on its side. And I'm going to look down and just make a little incision here, down like that. Some people think this is madness, but that's just get like that so you get some consistency. Especially if you want to do a small cut, like a brunoise or something like that. So now I can control the size of the slice and I'm pulling out the knife as I hold everything together because if I don't hold it together everything's going to slide with me okay this little piece here I'm going to try not so now we have these slices I'm going to stand it up straight now it's almost similar you see this excuse me the similarity between this and like the other things we've cut so far now we'll do the same thing going down so we get our dice keep everything together okay like so all right now we turn it this way and we dice again, so we can get that nice little size. This is about a small dice right here, okay? So this is good for like salads, compotes, even fillings. So you have that consistency, okay? It's very important to have a consistency in your cut, especially if you're working in a good restaurant, okay? Okay, guys, so we've spoken about these Mercer rules before. And it has the different sizes of cuts. And you use this in the culinary school, and you help, this helps you as a guide to measure the size of what you're doing. So, for example, if you're doing the small dice, which is a quarter inch, you know, you got to start off with the batonet that's quarter inch. If you're going to do brunoise, you got to start off with the one eighth thickness of the julienne by two inches. So, the batonet will give you the quarter inch, the julienne will give you that. This is a large batonet, three quarters, okay? This is a really good tool. It's metal, so it's highly durable. And we'll use this for comparison, and we'll talk about it more in class, okay? But first, we're going to do carrots, okay? All right, now this is a big carrot, all right? This is what you would call a horse carrot. And for scale, if you see my parry knife, you can see how, how big that knife is. I mean, it came out to here, too, that carrot, all right? So these are used in restaurants because they're very easy to peel. They're large. They use it easy to use on machinery like a mandolin if you're shredding it. Okay, little teeny carrots take up too much time to cut and clean. All right, so let's work on a brunoise. So first off, you want to edge this off, all right? So let's cut this guy in half, okay? All right, let's get that a little bit off here. All right, so let's get the straight edge here first. So as we get cut the straight edge, okay, it helps us to... Put the carrot up on its side on a flat surface, just like other rounded things, so it's not rocking on you when you're trying to cut it, okay, which could be dangerous. So let's go here now, full confidence with the knife, okay. All the extras go into the stock pot. This has been washed beforehand. All right, so now we got our third side, and now our fourth side here, okay. All right. In culinary school, you do a lot of knife skills first off. So we got somewhat of a block that we want. Let's fix the edges. Even everything out. So we want to do our alumet or our batonate first. 
Okay, so let's look at our thing on the bottom here. So this is about four inches here. All right. All right, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to cut it in half. So let's do the large dice first. Okay, three quarters inch. All right. And you can see you can get these dices easier and faster when you have a large piece of carrot, not those little tiny carrots. All right, so we'll cut this guy in half. And with a carrot, you have to be confident and cut straight down. If you kind of hesitate and go sideways, you're not going to get a perfect cut. All right, so. Okay, so now we have our four sticks. Put them this way. And we're going to try to get those cubes now. Dice it using our finger as the guide. That technique that we've been learning. Okay. All right. So now we have a large dice of carrot. Okay. This is good for soup, stews, stocks, chicken soup, okay? This is a large one, okay? Now let's do a smaller one. Okay, we'll take the other half here. We'll clean it up and round it off. All right, remember confidence. Okay, this is a pretty hard carrot, but you gotta cut with confidence. Use your strength, hold the knife tight. <clears throat> okay, go in with, at first with the edge and then Hold down. Don't be afraid of the waste. This stuff never gets wasted in the restaurant. Okay, you use it for a super stock, something else. So we got a little rectangle again now. So we're going to go smaller, okay? We're going to go, let's see, what are we going to do here? Let's do a, let's do a small dice. So we'll try to get four pieces out of this. I'm going to cut the last one in half. Okay, then we're going to stack it. If you see it's kind of slippery on you, just do two at a time, all right? And just line it up nice and just okay use the whole length of the knife so you can see where you're cutting okay you can see that the carrots are starting to bend but that's just normal okay that's why sometimes you can't get 100 percent perfect and then now we're going to go small this is like a small dice almost brunoise make sure to tuck your thumb behind it's a bad habit i've had to stick, stick with me through these years where my thumb kind of likes to sneak out. Luckily, I haven't cut it off yet. Okay, so now we got a nice little size dice. Again, you want a nice dice for consistency. All right. If these, if you have some that are this big and then you have one big guy like that in there, things aren't going to cut cook evenly. All right. This guy's still going to be raw. These guys are going to be cooked. All right. Try for the small one. Okay, the smallest. Let's try for a small one. Watch. I make some planks here. Okay, remember just edge it as usual. Especially when we do a mirepoix. Mirepoix is for soup, and it's a starting flavor builder with onion, celery, carrot. It's about two parts carrot. I'm sorry, I apologize. Two parts onion, one celery, one carrot. You see this a lot in French cooking. Okay, so now we have our little cube here. I'm gonna cut this in half. All right. I'm going to try to get some small planks here. So you got to do planks and sticks, alumettes or julienne, so you can get the dice. Okay, let's go. It's difficult to see with the cell phone in my face. <laughs> okay, little planks. All right. These are about a quarter of an inch. I use, notice that I'm using my fingers to guide. I'm just going to do that bit for now because I don't want to slip. All right, now, same thing here. Just, I'm putting pressure against my fingers so that the knife is cutting nice and straight with confidence and the wobbling. Okay, let's put that last one off. All right, snack. And get these guys together like that and do the same thing now this way, okay? Get, remember the speed comes with experience. You want to be able to get this consistency before you work on your speed and have that crazy speed, okay? All right. So now you got about a small, but this is actually about a brunoise. There's even smaller brunoise, much smaller, okay? <clears throat> so these guys are really tiny. This is good for like a little garnish on top of something, especially soup or gratiné, all right? So that's what you look for. If you take a knife skills test, this would probably be in the 90s or so. All right, you want to have good consistency. And if you take a test or a practical exam that's involving knife skills, it's like, like this piece here, we didn't really make the cut. 
the chef will look at it like this and see how much consistency you have in your cut, as well as how much waste you have. So he'll see if it gives you three pounds of carrots, but you come back with like a half a pound of perfect dice, they're going to know that you threw out most of your carrots. All right, so that's what I want to cover right now with the dicing, especially with carrots, because once we're in person, you're going to be seeing them a lot. Let's talk about celery, okay? This is a full stalk of celery, okay? When you buy celery, you should buy it like this, not just the hearts. You want all these little leaves and stuff inside, okay? These give a lot of good flavor, especially in tuna salad and other dishes. People use the leaves for garnish. This is very flavorful, this part of the celery. Okay, this is why people like to use celery seed. You could use this as well. This will give you that nice, powerful flavor. It's a very strong though, okay? So be careful. But one of the things you got to be careful about is this. What's this stuff here? Dirt, our enemy. So well, before we do anything, we've got to wash this bad boy. Okay, so before you wash it, you have to you have to peel all the ribs out because in between the ribs, and each one is called a rib, there is dirt, Okay. And I am going to cut, clean down my cutting board. I'm just doing this for the sake of showing you. So you can't just rinse it on the outside. You have to take these apart and get the dirt out of each one, okay? You don't want to give people some dirt. I and mean, you probably went somewhere and got dirt in your chicken wings. That's because you had a lazy kitchen staff. As I cleaned out my celery, cleaned out the inside of the ribs, I'm saving this guy for some salad, some chicken salad. This is very flavorful. I washed them out. Make sure you put them on some paper towel with the other celery ribs to dry out. So let me get some of these guys that are cleaned right here. All right, let me make sure they're dry. Okay. So very, very important, especially, you know, fresh greens, cilantro, things like that. You gotta make sure that they're all really well washed, especially cilantro. Cilantro has a ton of dust and sand and dirt for some reason. Um, if you've ever been a chef or you worked in a restaurant, if you've ever gotten a case of cilantro and by accident they've turned it upside down, it's even worse because all that dirt is all over the leaves now 100%. So you got to really wash it really, really good. Okay, so let's do a dice and a rib real quick. So to dice it, we'll cut off the end. This goes for our stock pot. So does this bad boy. We don't waste these pieces. Now you see how this naturally, the anatomy has like that U-shape slide you can put some peanut butter and, and raisins and do that ants on a log thing but we're doing something else so we're just gonna get a dice here today so we'll cut the half cut it in half i mean then flip the rib over and in the middle cut it right in half so if we wanted a small dice we would cut it in half again each section just to get those sticks because the anatomy of the cell is not gonna be perfect 100 percent but we could get close enough then use our fingers to guide Okay, get that dice, okay? So we have a nice little dice of celery, okay? Good for salads, you can go smaller, stuff like that. Macaroni salads, other salads, even for soup, you would do something else, but large dice for soup, just cut in half and just hack it, you know? Get a large dice right there, okay? If you were gonna do this for kids and do that ants in a log thing, with no joke, make sure Obviously, cut those ends off, but you have to peel this stringy membrane that's on the outside. You see that stuff here? So you take a peeler to this, and it'll come right out. There's nothing worse for a little kid to get grossed out by that, okay? But if you're doing regular rounds for, like, deli salad or something like that, just put it upright this time with the curve facing up, and just go to town. Nice and small. You could do this with soup as well, depending on... So the natural anatomy gives you this cute little curvy cut, okay? So you got your curvy cut here, you got your large dice, and you got your small dice, okay? So these are just a few variations for celery. And remember, this bad boy is full of flavor, so don't throw him out. Use him for salads, stock, soups. My favorite is chicken salad, tuna salad with this guy, really minced. Plus you could use your little, break out your little culinary tweezers and use these for garnish as well, okay? All right, now we have these nice, really nice golden mangoes. Usually come from the Caribbean, Florida, Jamaica, Antigua. These are really nice and soft. South America, they have nice small golden ones, not like these. Here we get these huge ones that kind of, sometimes they're not really the best. But these are usually in season around Christmas time as well. Let's ship them up here. You can buy a case of these for 10 bucks now. 
So there's a few ways to clean the mangoes. So I'm going to show you one or two ways. So one way is the mango has a really long bone that goes, you know, the length of the fruit going back to side. So there's flesh on the left side, right side, but that bone is somewhere in the middle, okay? Some people like to just, you know, hack it in half this way, hack one half off that way, okay? And then some people just like to eat this bit here. I mean, you can get some off of here, but then that pit is right, right there. That's all pit. So you could chew around this, which I'm going to save and chew on it myself. Okay. There's a few ways people like to do this to get all the flesh out. You could use a cup, or you can use a knife and do some flesh marks. Take a little paring knife, and don't go all the way through. Just go like that. I kind of went through the skin, so let me try to continue with this guy here. You don't want to go through the skin. All right. Just on the diagonal. Not, don't break the skin if you can't. Okay. This will help to expose the fruit a lot. And get it out of the skin in a way that you can manage. So then you kind of pop it inside out like that. Kind of get that cute design, well, kind of looks like some Pokemon thingy, all right? But now you can kind of like either use a knife or kind of like just pick it out, but it exposes the fruit better, so you can kind of peel it out, okay? These need a little more time, they're a little sour, hence they're on sale. But this is how you can get out a lot of the fruit without wasting it. Another way is to use a cup, let me see which one, I don't think these guys are soft enough for that. So cut off the half, okay, cut off the other half. All right, save that guy to chew on. All right, let me see what cup. Is. So this usually works better with larger mangoes. So the, the cup will kind of be a, a way to scoop out the flesh and you kind of put it on like this. And in such a manner that you push this down and separate the fruit from the skin. So let's try this method, okay. Cool, so there's my skin, completely taken off, okay. And we got a perfect piece of mango. And that's probably the best way, the most effective way. Okay, once I learned that technique, prefer that technique because you really don't waste any of the mangoes halves because you're kind of wasting a, a decent amount if you're doing this method and then you know pulling the flesh out this one you can get nice consistent dices which is perfect for a culinary technique so now we're going to talk about supreming or supreme citrus that means just to take out the fruity center for fruit salads for entrees for garnishes it's pretty much the standard. No one just gives a slice of orange with a rind on it unless it's like a cocktail or if it's like some other kind of simple garnish, okay? But with all oranges, we do the same technique. Now, this guy is called a pomelo. It's uh, very indigenous to like, I guess, the Florid Florid uh, Floridian, Caribbean areas. And it's like a cross between an orange and a grapefruit. It's very good, but it's got a thick, very thick rind, so... With any rounded fruit, and you'll see this when I do the melons, you want to cut the tops and bottoms off. So take a bit off. Don't go too, don't do this. You got to go much deeper than that, okay? Like about here. Take that off. See how much rind is on this bad boy? Okay, you can cut a little more because you want to get the segments, all right? So we'll do on this side, all right? Just check it. Okay, maybe go a little deeper because there's a lot of rind on these bad boys. Okay. So now we're going to follow the anatomy of the orange or pomelo, whatever citrus you're using. I'm going to cut this way. It's hard to see from this way, but I'm going to go in here where the flesh starts and just curve the knife around. So you can see how we got that strip going. And if you look at the piece that we cut off, you can see has that curvature, so that's how I cut it, and that's how you're going to try to cut it, all right, in that curvy style, all right, so go in here again, where the flesh starts, and just do the same thing, this takes a bit of practice, 
but you don't want to just go straight down okay you want to curve and use the whole blade okay and every piece you're gonna have a little flesh in it, but every piece should be nice and curved just like that all right all right so this guy smells really good it's almost it almost tastes like a kind of like a um, ruby red grapefruit okay A really good recipe for grilled shrimp and citrus salad that really goes well with this. So now when you're done, check it out. See if there's a, any pith left on there. Just like with peppers, the white thing and the membrane here is the pith that's on the outside. So if you have some, just carefully remove that with a good sharp knife. Don't go crazy. If you have a good sharp knife, it'll do most of the work for you. Okay. All right, these are actually on sale. Two for five. Oh. All right, so just wipe down a little bit so you don't get too slippery here with all this juice. All right. Make sure your cutting board is clean and not too juicy. All right, so now if I can get close enough for this to stay in focus. So you see here we have these membranes that separate each piece of flesh on any citrus is the same so these lines you want to go in before and after that line in like a v-stroke manner okay so you're gonna go down like this not all the way through the membrane and then go down like that and then you see what fell out you got this beautiful little segment called a supreme or supreme if you're French and it has no membrane it's just all fruit okay and this is good for citrus. Now I'm gonna put these in a bowl as I complete this. All right. And just let it fall off onto your cutting board. Like this, a pomelo is a really good one. Just in between the membranes. That one we don't need. Nice big one here. All right. That's a really big membrane. What I do with pomelos is they're inconsistent with the membranes. Some are huge, some are small. Some are like are really bitter. Like this one's a giant. Like these are what we were talking about. Okay. Right. I'm gonna skip that one because there's a lot of membrane. Okay. Alright. So I'm gonna put these guys, this one I don't want. I'm gonna put these in a bowl. And in a restaurant, you would never waste this. We're going to take this. Now I'm going to squeeze the juice from this into the bowl or onto the floor. <laughs> and it will stay in this water. So as you need it for a salad or whatever you're using it for, garnish, cakes, you know, it's going to stay in this liquid and stay ready to be used. Okay. Okay, so you can use it for any citrus, like I said. Orange, lime, lemon, and some grapefruit here, okay? Especially now for the holidays, orange is really big in the season. All this beautiful citrus. You could use a paring knife like I'm doing here for this one. Okay, I'll use a paring knife for the segments. Just bang that out, okay? Remember, just go around. Using mostly the tip of the knife. Don't be afraid if you get some of that flesh off. Some of that off. All right. I'm having the same idea now, okay? Just going. The pairing knife sometimes would be a little better finesse with a smaller citrus. You can see, you get these nice pieces of orange. Okay. We actually do a salad in class, which is like an arugula salad with orange segments, parmesan, toasted pine nuts, just a simple lemon evo a la, uh, vinaigrette over either a chicken cutlet or veal. Get a nice height with the salad. 
where's the garnish as they say okay okay i'm doing this at a faster pace if you decide to do this or if we do this in class one day you'll have all that stuff nice okay so you can just see a little better i'll put them on a plate on a white background so now you can see all these segments and you can you know you can arrange them different ways you can do like a spiral i've done fruit tarts with the kids that you know you put them like this around on the fruit tart put some berries maybe a berry or fruit in the middle and then other colors coming in like that and then having a spiral motion i mean i'm just showing you this as an idea now this is not perfect but it really gives you a nice contrast okay. Also, another really easy way to cut a lemon for garnish. Get that sticker off. All right, if you're using this for drinks or anything like that, this is the best way to clean a lemon without having the seeds in it. Okay, and it looks nice. So once you cut it in half, take the tops and ends off. You want to cut into the pith center here, like in a, almost like a diagonal V shape kind of thing. So if you look now, it'll come right out. See that? Okay. See if there are any other seeds left. Take those bad boys out. Okay. Let's take them out of there. Okay. So now we got those guys out. So now you cut this in half. Then you can get either cut in half again or you can make thirds. So one way that way, one way down. This is good, especially for bartenders and stuff like that. I used to have to prep stuff like this. So you get these nice segments with the rind, but no seeds. And you get like a nice piece of lemony flesh, okay? All right, just to keep in mind. All right, now let's talk about how we peel hard-shelled um, fruits and melons, melons in particular. So if you have a cantaloupe, if you have a watermelon, if you have a pineapple or a pina, or a honeydew. I mean, these are kind of the season now. But it's just for the sake of education here. They all get cut the same way. Almost similarly to how we did the supreming of the citrus. Where you're going to take the top and the bottom off first. And then peel off the sides. So let's take off some of the top. Okay. The idea, at least with the cantaloupe, is that you don't want to have any green showing. Okay. So you're going to do the technique where we curve the knife down the side of the melon or pineapple and you want to saw in that motion and swipe down this way not straight not straight down not like this and like that just you got to try like finesse it that way just really nice and slowly okay so go in at one part here and start to curve and that's kind of what we want all the way through from end to end, no green, okay? Now if we look at our peel here, this guy's nice and curved, okay? 
So we want that with the whole fruit. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here, the same thing again, for all the way around. See this one, you gotta be careful. See there's some greenness, so just shave that off. You gotta make sure you're curving properly, all right? So we'll get in a little deeper. Okay, these fruits may be a little hard. So we'll just slice and twist. Okay, make sure you get all that green. So when you're done, you're gonna do a once over. Make sure there's no green on the outside of the mound. Okay, just a little bit here. Just use your knife and gently just kind of shave it off. Okay. This we're gonna use for fruit salads, for fruit platters, things of that nature. Okay, be very careful when doing this. Okay. All right, so make sure you have a really sharp knife. Just get that off of there. Okay. This is a little difficult with these out of season because they're very hard when they're out of season. And they can't really ripen wherever they come from. All right. Now that I clean that off, <clears throat> I'm gonna cut this in half, all right? So we cut it in half, and then we'll have our seeds in the middle. Okay, we're gonna take these seeds out, all right? So there's two methods to do it. You can scoop it if you're doing slices. Me, I just like to cut it in half if you're doing it for fruit platters, because you want it to be flat, and you'll see what I mean in a second. All right, this is more like a pumpkin. So you go in here, and you're gonna remove the seeds with the knife and just take some out like that. Okay, so you got some there. Okay, you could go a little deeper or you could just take it out with your fingers. So now, the reason is this can stay flat when we slice it for, say, a fruit platter. Okay, so let's do that one more time with the other half and move on. Okay, maybe go a little lower. So this, I mean, you take some off the ends here, but it's okay. Right, so you just flip it over and now for a platter you want to slice this way and we could dice it or we could slice it so we're going to slice it like this and then hold each slice with our finger so we're going about a quarter inch or so just use the tip of the knife and drag it back once you have it lined up the thickness that you want okay when you, if you go on to become chefs and stuff, one of the first jobs you're going to do is cold prep, and you'll be doing a lot of work with your knife and fruits and vegetables. Okay, so I've got that now. So now that we have all these lines going down across, you can push it and kind of fan it down and make a platter with that. Okay, now you can also put it up like this, and you could do it diagonally. Okay. You know, there's so many different ways people do it, and you can have it bend around, you can make it circular, stuff like that. But this is really out of season. If you do the avocado, you could do that kind of swirly thing. But I'm going to put this to the side and save this for something else. Okay. All right, so if you need to dice this kind of fruit, okay, just going to go in. One layer, like that, and go across, and then the same kind of dicing method that we did before. We're going for a large dice here. I'm using my finger to help it from sliding off, okay, because it is sticking. And we turn it this way, and then we get our dice, okay. All right, so now we have our really out of season, flavorless cantaloupe. In the perfect large dice. Okay, so the same goes with the honeydew. I'm not going to cut this open because this needs some time. And right now it's December, so it'll probably take about seven months for this to ripen. So I'm just going to go put this in the trash. Okay, now for piña, pineapple, they usually, well, they're always growing in either South America, Mexico, someplace like that. Ecuador is a good place. All right. Now, this is similar, and these are always usually sweetened in season, especially if you get them from Costco. All right, so we're going to take the top off here. Okay, just go about an inch down. All right, and hack that down so it looks good inside, nice and yellow. Here we see some, like, hard brown bruising on the inside. That may mean that it's over-ripened, so you don't want that, or someone dropped it 
and played soccer with it in the supermarket. You know, down at the bottom. You all right there, baby? Baby calls when he wants attention. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, so we'll take that guy off. And the same thing, we're going to peel the sides off. But the only difference is this doesn't have seeds, it has a core. Okay? Same idea. Okay? Curve. Okay? These are usually would save in a couple of restaurants I worked in. I actually wanted to myself. Boil them in sugar and water, make a simple syrup with the skins of a pineapple. Because there's still a, lot of, a good amount of meat left in here. That's why fruit platters and prepared fruit things, when you go to a supermarket or somewhere, they're very expensive because they take a lot of work and they also waste a lot of a lot of the fruit making that perfect little fillets for you so this guy probably was dropped somewhere you can see that little bit there we won't use him but just do it once over make sure you don't have any dark spots or pieces of the outside thorny bit okay that's just a little thing here so there's two ways i'm going to show you how this I'll slice it like for a platter and how we would slice it for doing a dice say for like a salsa, like a pineapple salsa that we do with our seared salmon, okay? So there's the core right in the middle, right there, the hard bit, okay? You want to cut right through the middle of that, straight down, okay? Turn it, and do it again the other way. You're going to get four sections. All right, okay? <clears throat> so each section should look like this, all right? Nice yellow flesh. You have the core going through here. I don't know if you could see, but... It's kind of bony here. I mean, you could chew on this, but you can't really serve that. Some places do. It's just they're not very good. All right. So carefully now, you want to run your knife through. Just remove the core. Don't go too deep. Okay. So we have that core out. All right. You can save that. Use that in your simple syrup or chew on it. So now we have that flat edge here that we wanted. Okay. So this will stay when we want to slice it. So since this one is not so pretty. I use this for dicing, so we want to slice all the way through halfway. Make sure I keep the knife level. Okay, so we got our two segments. And the same thing. Use your knife to fingers to guide the knife. Okay. Turn it and dice. Alright. So now we have a really nice small dice, especially for not small dice, but about medium for a pineapple salsa or some kind of other salsa. Very good. All right, so I'm going to show you now how to slice it. Let's make sure this side is nice and yellow. All right. So once again, take off the core. All right, take that guy out. Put it in a simple syrup. Chew on it. Okay. So that was the same thing we did with the um, melon. So you want to slice thin. Okay. But you want to put your finger on the end to make sure it's not coming out of line. So guide with your finger and use the tip to drag through. All right, or you could go like that. The same thing now. You could you could make that fruit platter, okay? All right, you can take your knife like this and use it to move it around. All right, but I'm going to put it on the side for now. All right, so since it's not summer, I just want to show you a watermelon. Oh, this personal watermelon. A few tips about watermelons, especially when it's the, they're in season. These are from Mexico. These personal little guys. Always a sign, even for the, the large ones, to know if it's a sweet one. You see how it's yellow here? This means that it's probably very sweet because the sugar has settled here when it was in the field. So it was like this in the field. Then when it was harvested in the market, you'll see like you'll get this yellow deposit of sugars here. So that's what makes that yellow thing here. Okay. Um, also, they should feel heavier. All right, so the same thing with these guys, but I'm going to show one way to keep some of the rind on for a nice little serving. It's the same idea with this, but this time I'm not going to... Uh... So I guess my, my son coughs for his attention. So this one I'm just going to cut in half. From, you could peel this and cube it just like I did the other round um, fruits. All right, so this one I'm just going to cut in half. Let's see if it's any good. I mean, these are usually, sometimes, mostly sweet. All right, so I'm going to cut it in half. Then I'm going to do this thing where I cut it in a third this way and another third. So if I, if I do it like this, if I kind of show you a marking here, a marking there. So you want to do it like that. 
just go straight down, hard shell. So we could slice this up thin with the rind down, so it looks nice on a fruit platter or a garnish. Okay, so now we have our one segment here, you know, with the rind still on. Okay, so now you want to just take this guy and we'll slice him thin just like we did the other stuff. Okay, remember, use your finger to keep the everything the stack from falling over and just go straight down with the knife okay okay, All right. okay. okay. so you'll get like these little pieces with a little bit of green on it especially if you have in a fruit pot it looks nice i like to turn it over like this and then kind of do one of these things Fan it out like that, and you can circle it out like that. Do like a little whatever you call it, okay? So this is just a simple way just to use for a fruit platter. And you can just put it back together and move it wherever you want. Now I just want to show you guys some exotics, quote-unquote. Two of my personal favorite fruits, actually. They're very indigenous to um, the Mediterranean, Greece, stuff like that. These in particular, they're in season now. They're usually really cheap. They usually come in this country from Arizona, Southwest area. These are really popular with my students who've never tasted these before. One of my favorite recipes with these is making um, spice drops with these or like gum drops or yeah, the spice drops. These is a big, this is really big in Arizona, this fruit, but it grows wild if you've ever seen it. I'll show some pictures in our lesson in class, but they get green and then when they're ripe, they're like this even, and they clean off. These have usually these dots have a bunch of spikes that come out from them because it's part of the cactus. And if they're not well cleaned, even if I go like this, I still might get some remnants of those um, needles in my skin. So be very careful, like especially if you're trying to get these yourself and clean them, make sure you have good gloves, okay? This guy here is called a pomegranate. You all know the brand, where is it? Palm that makes the juice, but they also grow the majority of the pomegranates in the United States, and these are really big, and they export them around the world. But in Europe and Middle East and the Mediterranean, these are really, really abundant, especially now in the winter. They're definitely a winter fruit. So I'm just going to cut one in half and use it for my own stuff. Usually when we clean it, we don't cut it in half. We cut it in a different way. But just so you can see what it looks like inside, it's like a web work, almost like a honeycomb of like these little jewels, they're called the seeds of the fruit, and that's where that juice comes from. And this is kind of a messy situation, so be careful. So this is the inside of a pomegranate, all right? And if you look close enough, you can see all these little beautiful seeds. They're almost like jewels. So I'm going to crack this open so you can see more. It almost looks like a geode, kind of like a crystal on the inside. You have all this beautiful fruit in here in these forms of these seeds okay now these seeds here are very very sweet but at the same time they're a little bitter they're almost like almost like a raw corn feel but like the juice is so sweet and these are very delicious but as you can see it's a pain in the butt to clean these all right the best thing to do which i'll show you with the other one is you got to cut out the membrane and you don't want the white parts like this pith here this membrane that breaks up like these little cavities okay but this will definitely stay in your hand, stay in your cutting board. So you want to work carefully with this stuff, all right? So personally, if you're going to do this, you're going to, it's best to do it like a bowl full of water. And I'm going to show you that with our next fruit that I'm going to cut properly. And so one of the best ways to cut this is just to cut the top of the bottom off. It's kind of like a running thing with fruits and vegetables, kind of tops and bottoms off. Okay. And then you want to make some segments here so it makes it easier to break it apart just get through the rind don't be afraid to cut through some of those little jewels of fruit those seeds okay okay but you see it's a mess okay so make sure you know you clean up the cream real good okay so now you can break it apart at the seams that you made Ooh, make sure they're not falling over the floor so right where we see them is just crack it open, okay? Now I like to then put some, I'll do half here because I'm just working in a small batch. 
but you can see all these beautiful seeds that just popped out normally all right so i like to use this technique and in a restaurant you'll use like a large huge container that's about you know a couple gallons but the idea i like this technique is that when you're cleaning them you all the red juice doesn't get all over the place, doesn't get in your skin, doesn't dye your fingers red, plus it doesn't splatter everywhere. Because if you're trying to do this fast, and you, and you will try to do it fast if you're in a restaurant, you don't want the juice splattering your face. So with the curved part, try to just push it out. You can hear that snap. And just kind of like with your fingers, just kind of roll them out, push them out. Bye bye. Hi, bye bye. All right, and then put in the water. Also, the water helps for these white membranes to flow to the top. So instead of picking out each little bit, you give it a little while and they'll all float to the top and the seeds will sink, which is one of my favorite things about this technique. And I've been eating this my whole life and you never stop learning about new techniques on how to cut this thing properly. So I'm just going to speed this up. Just break it in there and then use your fingertips to kind of just like do like one of these things like you're playing guitar on it kind of. Just rub them out. Don't be afraid to break some of the seeds. It's fine. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's that. You just, just put it to the side. Get the other couple sides that you have in there. You know, if you were talking about ancient history, this was like one of the food of the gods. Pomegranate in Greece. They used to, the gods liked these things. Plus, they used to like to screw with us humans. But that's folklore. All right. So let's get this other guy in here. This is the last... So I, I have other sides, but I'm not going to show you every single little bit, okay? So this guy's pretty good. So now, I don't have any of those red peels of the skin. I've taken them all off. And now what we're left with is the white membrane. So this is a big one right here. And the seeds. So kind of take the seeds, do one of these things in your hands. Kind of roll them in your hands. I don't know if you've ever made hummus with fresh chickpeas, but like the key to that is rolling off the skin of the chickpea once it's cooked. Gives you the really, really creamy hummus if you're a hummus fan. Okay, so let's go. that's something we would do in class as well. So I'm gonna let this stay now that I've rubbed them. Come back in a few minutes, and then you'll see how the white bits have all floated to the top, and the seeds stay at the bottom. Yeah, right, so I let this sit for a few minutes, and obviously, working in a restaurant, you would have a lot more than this. But then now, you know, just kind of go in and scoop out the white membrane that's all floated to the top. Okay, some of this stuff will be down there, but it's okay. You'll get out like about 80% of this stuff or much. That's why when you go somewhere where this is prepared, either a food market or somewhere, it's really, really expensive because to clean it is a lot of work. But I feel this way, if you're not getting the juice everywhere. Okay. And it's also not spraying all over your clothes, your family members, your white tablecloth, or whatever. And so let's scoop the bottom out. And now you see, there's still a little bit of white, but it's an acceptable amount, especially if you're doing such large portions and large amounts of prep work. Look at them. They're like beautiful. They're almost like gems. Okay. And, you know, it's very, very tasty. I mean, it can, can get a little chewy because the seeds are a little hard sometimes, but the, the flavor is really good. You could candy these. Use these for garnish on anything, cheese platters, etc. All right, but if you like, this is pomegranate. Let me go on trees. All right, so our prickly pear or cactus fruit. There's a few ways to cut this. I'm going to show you two techniques. All right, I'm going to cut the top off and the bottom off. Okay, see the nice color. This has a staining issue as well. Native Americans actually used to use this to stain their um, clothing and the things, the and paints and other things that they used to wear in the headgear and stuff like that. I'm a little off as I wing this. So you're going to cut down a little bit down the side and you can see here where the membrane over the outside of the thick um, cactus is meeting the pink flesh in the middle here and we want that. So now that I cut that, kind of get a little squeeze and to just kind of peel it out like this and you can see this is really thick this weighs almost as much as the inside of the fruit now this is the pay dirt right here and this is the, the garbage here so this is actually similar to like a cactus leaf or napales but 
this won't really work for nopales because it's too tough and it just won't have the right flavor okay so now that you've got that cleaned up we could dice it slice it so i'm just going to cut it in half so you can see what it looks like on the inside so it has these little seeds in here okay these are really good these are actually one of my favorite fruits as well i mean the staining fruit really um <laughs> i guess i gravitate towards but this also, like I said, in Arizona, they use this a lot, especially in fruits and fillings and cakes and like those spice drops are really good. Then a few times, but it's just the juice. It doesn't have these seeds. If I break it open, you can kind of see the seeds in the pits a little bit. There's one guy right there. Now, if you eat too many of these, you get constipated. And that's happened to me in the past. I know too much information, but I've had students who really fall in love with these because they're really delicious. And they'll eat five, six of them, and then they won't be able to poop. So please, enjoy responsibly. Okay? So that's the best way. Another way is people, you know, they cut it in half. Well, this one's probably juicier. Wow, look how red that one is. And they kind of do one of these things like it's a kiwi. Kind of just go in there, scoop it up, take it out. Oop. Looks like I just removed someone's brains, okay? Then they would use this for garnish, maybe dust, dice it up with some scallop or shrimp and put it in there. Like a little bit of um, flair. And then... Uh, you know, cut it up in the middle like that, quarter it. Okay, or you can do our technique, which I think is superior. Cut the edge off again. Just be careful because this is thick, and if you don't have a sharp knife, it will not cut through the membrane easily. Okay. See how messy this guy is? I'm gonna cut this in half. I'll try to dice as best as possible. It's hard to do a perfect dice with these because these little pits and seeds get in the way. You can do your best. And you could use that with a little something, okay? This usually is used for the juice. It's incorporated into things, pies, things like that. I've seen empanadas made with these and some cheese. It's very sweet and kind of tart, okay? If you like, you know, it's kind of like having a sour cherry-ish kind of thing, but more of like a mealy texture. One last time for the halibut. Just sides off, sides off. Run the knife up like that. Split it open, and there you go. Okay, looks like a little Easter egg. All right, last but not least, some nice strawberries. Make sure you wash them first and pat them dry. Okay, don't be too rough with them because they will bruise. Okay, we'll be more in-depth with other strawberry garnishes when we do crepes. This time around, I'm just going to show you a simple way of just how to slice them up and quarter them real quick. Okay, I'm just drying these off because of... If you're prepping a lot of them, you don't want them to be wet, okay? Just take a couple of these. These are really nice organic strawberries. Strawberries in season in March. I know it's December, but these are grown in a greenhouse in California. But when strawberries are in season in March and April, they are very, very delicious. And at the height of the season, they're very, very sweet. That's why sometimes you get in strawberries any time of the year. They're kind of tart, all right? So one mistake that my students make, and a lot of people make, is that when they're cutting a strawberry, they do one of these things. And they throw this out, and then they, you know, hack the hell out of that piece. You see how much strawberry is being wasted here? Almost more than half. This is more common than I like to admit. But, you know, this is not to be thrown out. you, you got to learn how to cut properly. The best way to do this is either to prep all in advance by pulling the green stem off since we're just dicing we're not doing oh, oh zoom hello i oh, gotta edit this shit all right so you want to take the leaves off all right and then you kind of you can put your knife in like this carefully and kind of core the stem out okay especially if you're doing pies and stuff you work with a chef and they see you doing this you're going to be in for you get a pan thrown at you so please don't do that i mean i'm not allowed to but i've worked with chefs that like to throw things at people so now you have just the minimum amount of waste okay you just have the green and the core okay compared to this this and this i just have the core and this and some novice would have this okay you see the difference in waste all right so now that we've got this guy clean like this, we're going to turn it up on its side, and then we're just going to quarter it, say for a parfait or for some other usage, okay? So just right through the middle, right like that. This kind of cutting shows the inside of the strawberry, and you can see the 
natural beauty of the fruit itself, okay? Another way that we use this for garnish for something simple like this fruit platter I'm going to show you at the end. Just cut it in half once. You can use these on fruit platters, cheese platters. They always look pretty simple. Or you could even just give them a quartering. You know, but be careful. Okay. Oh. All right. And then you have like a little bunch. You can make like shapes, designs, trails, anything you want with these. Okay. All right. So... Another way is to slice it in slices. So we're going to do the same thing, but this time we'll leave a little bit on, but I'm very, very close to the edge. So I'm not wasting anything. I'm wasting hardly anything. If you see the difference between that, I hate bringing this guy back because I've seen this so many times, especially if you're working in a school, it's a lot of waste here. Okay. So we got that off. We got our flat surface. Let's put him down. And using your finger to guide, you can use a paring knife or you could use your regular chef's knife and just drag thin slices. This is good for a garnish as well, but you could use this to add to, you know, a parfait as well, or other things that have sliced strawberry. Not so much a salad. A salad, you use the quarter. Okay, so now you see the slices, and then you could kind of do that thing that I did with the melons, where you could kind of spread it out, and you can see how that, you know, you get that fanned out look kind of thing going, okay? But they're just, you know, nice slices of strawberry, just to see it in a proper view, okay? Just the insides and out. All right, so now this is a simple fruit platter, okay? And all those fruits that I sliced up, I have kind of arranged on a plate. This is a small, say, a little fruit platter for a little party, just with those simple knife skills, okay? I'm going to fix this angle. All right, so using the... All right, so just a simple fruit salad, now that we've completed doing all the vegetables and fruits for today. Um, so I put the sliced pineapple, and I fanned it out like I showed you before. I put some of the sliced cantaloupe, fanned it out, let it curve around the plate. Now you have the holes here, and I like to say these are holes, if it's cheese platter or fruit platter. And you want to put other fruits, the smaller fruits there, kind of to block it, to make it more symmetrical, okay? It's a little uneven, don't worry, because the waiter will probably knock it over and make it I'm leaving anyway, so you know, cut some strawberries in half, put one here just to close up that hole, put one there, close up that hole, some of the other ones we sliced before, and you'll see these types of strawberries like on a, uh, like a, sh a cheese platter or something like that, one of our corded ones, make sure the green is looking pretty good, that's not like completely black, you want to put it nice and fresh looking, okay? All right, then we'll add some of the other fruits that we were working on, okay? All right, so, real quick. The segments that we cut before, the citrus segments, I had them in the juice, I took some out, and I dried them out, and you can see how pretty the color is on these. You can see the green lime, the yellow lemon, the pomelo. That almost looks like hamachi tuna right there, but you can see how beautiful this is. And when you arrange it on a plate or a platter, it looks really, really nice, especially when you put it like with some grilled shrimp and stuff like that. The citrus really goes well with that. So you could actually use this as a nice garnish if you're going to put it as the base of something. You know, you could put a crab cake there. You could put the grilled shrimp would usually go around. Then we would have the lime and all that other stuff there. You know, you could use your imagination. Okay. And I'll just use it as the centering. Okay, some of these strawberries are not the best. Being in the middle of the season, but you know, just put it right down the middle. So just imagine if you were making a, a tart and you put that on top, okay? Or just use your imagination. Maybe it's a little bit of the sauce here, something there, but make sure you keep it coherent. All right, nice little pinwheel, okay? All right, so let's finish up our fruit platter here. All right, get some more berries on there. I'm gonna put some blackberries, maybe some. Some, some blueberries, blackberries are actually nice now, they're in season. There's some really big ones, if you want to cut one in half. Looks pretty, it looks kind of weird, but makes for a nice garnish. I'm going to put it there at the end, just stack it sideways, kind of like that. Take some washed blueberries, and all this stuff has been washed, just so you remember. Just use your hand to kind of guide them just around the side. Just to kind of cover up those little gaps, okay. 
This is just a simple plating idea. You can do them more complex, less complex, whatever comes to mind. <clears throat> Take some of those power glad seeds and dry them in the water. Dry them out of the water. Just sprinkle some on top. Just to add that color. And then don't go too nuts. Just like I said before, with any garnish, you don't want to put something saucy or sticky that people cannot remove on their own. Maybe some on the outside here. Okay. Make sure the rims are clean. Okay. Let's double check. Maybe another couple of strawberries here and there. You know, you never have too many strawberries because everybody's going to go for that first. All right. Maybe just a couple here. Another one there. So from any angle, it kind of looks appetizing, okay? All right, guys, I hope to do this with you guys in class one day soon.